Hi friends, welcome back to At Laura's Table. Today, I would like to show you how to make a Creole dirty rice. It's a one pot meal that is sure to please your entire family. Let's get started. So when we make our Creole dirty rice, there's a few techniques I want you to keep in mind. Tip number one for making your Creole dirty rice is to get a good sear on your meat. And when I mean a good sear, I mean, I want you to put this meat in your pan one pound at a time. So we have a pound of ground beef and I want you to lay it down in the bottom of this dry pan. Here I have a six quart enamel cast iron pan. Lay it down in here and don't touch it for several minutes because we want to start getting some brown, crusty, yummy goodness down on the bottom of this pan. We're trying to build what's called fawn, which is that brown deliciousness on the bottom of the pan. This adds our flavor and builds our flavor for what will be our rice later. So tip number one, don't touch your meat for several minutes, okay? We're gonna brown one pound at a time, move it to a clean pan that I have here, then do the other meat. So, you see my tool here that I like to use to crunch up and crumble my ground beef and my andouille sausage? It breaks the meat into these tiny crumbles. I will um, link a similar tool in my blog post I'm going to move this out of the way so you can see where we're starting to build this. See the browning here? You won't see as much with this 80-20 ground beef as you will with your andouille sausage. But over time, as you brown these meats, you'll start to see that browning. And you want to make sure you just don't crowd your pan with your meat because then it will steam and you're missing out on flavor there. So let's continue to cook this meat and get it crumbled nicely. So we're gonna add our homemade andouille sausage. I did a video on how you can make this at home yourself out of a one pound package of ground pork from your grocery store. I know that some of you have a difficult time finding um, fresh andouille sausage links in your grocery store. Super simple to make. So I want to spread this out a little bit and then we're going to let it brown and build that fond on the bottom of our pan. And spread that out a little bit. We're going to let that sit and not disturb it. Remember, tip number one is put your meat in the pan and let it be for several minutes so you start seeing that nice brown color in the bottom of your pan. Okay, we're gonna start to break up this pork. Now, when you make your andouille sausage, it may have more fat in it that starts to render out at this stage. My grocery store only had reduced fat ground pork when I went to buy it on this particular day. So, it doesn't have as much fat, but if you see, See where it's starting to get the brown, yummy deliciousness? And see how it's browned the meat right there? That's what we're looking for because this is going to add flavor. See that? Yum. Now your pan will not stay like this. I promise this is not gonna be a cleaning nightmare later. See how this candy dandy little our tool breaks up this meat so great. I'm going to link one for you on the blog. If you have 
Amazon Prime. Which I know we don't all have it, but it sure does make life easy when we can walk out to the mailbox or open the front door and all of a sudden there it is. It makes this in nice small crumbles so it's dispersed evenly throughout the dish. This meal will actually feed at least six good size adults. Like I said, I'm cooking this in a six quart Dutch oven and it will be pretty full by the time we're finished. So I'm going to scoop this pork out of here. I'm scooping the meat to a clean plate that I have sitting here on the side of the stove and we are going to continue to cook this and do our vegetables next. Now I have a large onion diced and one bell pepper. I like to use a colored pepper like um, red, yellow, or orange. Um, I think they're a little more mild than the green. If you happen to have some rather picky children at home, you can buzz these up in your food processor or dice them really fine. Um, my kids are big enough now, I don't get too many complaints about anything I cook, but I remember those days very well. And I was always trying to get as many colors of vegetables in them as I could when they were little. So since I had the reduced fat pork, I don't have a lot of fat left in my pan. If this was regular ground pork or just links of andouille sausage I bought at the store, I'd have more in there. So we'll probably need to add a little olive oil to this. But here's my onion and my peppers. You get a little olive oil for that. Just a touch. So since I've added my onion and my peppers with a little bit of olive oil, I'm adding a couple of pinches of salt. That will help these vegetables release some of their liquid. You see how I'm using a flat ended wooden spoon? That's gonna help me scrape all that brown deliciousness off the bottom of the pan here in a few minutes. Spread these out and let them start to sweat a little. We're coming up on tip number two here in just a second. Anyway, like I said, if you have super picky children, you can dice these vegetables up as fine as you'd like. Um, as well as with your tomatoes, you can use the diced tomatoes like I have here. You can use crushed tomatoes or tomato sauce. The reason I like the tomatoes, besides the fact that it adds more flavor, it's just another color of vegetable. And that's why this is considered a Creole dirty rice instead of a Cajun dirty rice. The tomatoes um, make that distinction. So a little bit of the water from these vegetables will start lifting some of this flavor off the bottom of this pan. But we are also going to be using some chicken stock or chicken um, base, however you like to refer to it. I have a reduced sodium organic chicken broth. I have heated it because that is my second tip. It helps keep my ish up at temperature 
All right, I'm going to add my tomatoes. Now, let's get this incorporated. So that was one 14 and a half ounce can of diced tomatoes. Nothing fancy. But since there was some liquid in that, I can already start to scrape the bottom of my pan. See how that's starting to lift that fond, as it's called, off the bottom of your pan. But it needs to be a little warm. I'm gonna add my bay leaf. And this is my homemade Cajun seasoning. It is on my blog. I will link it in the blog post. It says two tablespoons. I know that seems like a crazy ton, but we're putting three cups of rice and two cups of chicken stock in this. And rice tastes like nothing unless you season it. Chicken stock tastes like chicken water. So we want to add flavor and this is Creole. So we need to go to Louisiana and if we do, it needs to taste like something. So, I've got my chicken stock heated up. I mean, it's not boiling hot, but it's warm because once we get this heated through, we don't want to knock our temp down to room temperature and it be cold. I'm going to try and tuck that bay leaf down in there. Let him start getting happy with things. So let this start to bubble. See how it's getting all happy? It's doing a little happy dance. Happy, happy dance, happy dance. Now, let's add our meat back. Let this come up to temp. See if I can do it without dumping it all over the stove. See, this pot's starting to get full. And look, the bottom of that pot is cleaned off. No messy pots here, see? But it's not about it being clean, it's about all that flavor getting into your dish so that it's not bland. We don't want plain food around here. We want this to be packed full of flavor so that your efforts are rewarded. So, here's my rice. This is jasmine rice that I have rinsed till the water runs clear to remove any extra starch. That's tip number three. I know I've not even shown you tip number two. Here's my warm chicken broth. It's right here. Number two, number three. But we're gonna mix this in in just a minute, okay? Let's put in our rice. It's all stuck together now since I rinsed it, okay? But we don't want this to take forever to come up to temperature once we get this rice in. That's why you want your chicken broth warm. You're welcome to warm it on the stove. Be fancy like that. I warmed mine in the microwave. I don't use my microwave for a lot, but occasionally I'll use it for some things just to simplify what I'm working on. So I want to evenly distribute this rice through the dish. I don't want big pockets of rice. I want it all mixed up. That's why I wanted the ground beef and the pork sausage all crumbled up so nicely. So there we go. Let's see if you can hear that. It's still sizzling down in there. You hear it? Now I'm gonna pour in my warm chicken stock. I'm gonna get it mixed in. Make sure no rice is stuck to the sides. We want everybody tucked in nice 
in the broth. Look at all those colors. Isn't that pretty? My bay leaf is in there. A couple of rice grains on the side. We want this to come up to a full boil before we put the lid on and bring it down to a simmer, okay? Standard rice procedure, but this is all in one dish. See, I'm already starting to get a bubble because I had this broth warm. So tip number two is warm your broth. Tip number three is rinse your rice. It makes a difference in the outcome of your dish. So linked in the blog will be a video and a blog post about making your own andouille sausage. And also there will be a link for the homemade Cajun seasoning where you can control your own salt content if that's something you need to um, be concerned with for your um, family members. I think it makes a difference in this dish because you're using broth and it has sodium as well. Okay, you can see we're to a boil here with our broth. We want to place the lid on top, reduce the heat to simmer, and let this cook for 15 minutes, and then our dish will be complete. All right, our 15 minutes is up. Let's see how we did. So we want to fluff this with a fork just like we would any rice dish. There's my bay leaf. See how good that looks? All those vegetables, all the different colors. It's really hot. So I'm going to want to spoon some of this into a dish. So it, it can cool a little bit and I can get a taste. These dishes were my husband's grandmother's. His dad gave them to me as a gift. Turn that eye off. We don't want it to cook anymore. Doesn't that look delicious? All right, I'm gonna let this cool for just a second before I take a bite because I value the roof of my mouth. All right, I'll be right back with you guys. So we played a fun little game today while we were making our Creole dirty rice. I gave you three tips. If you go to the blog and read the blog, you'll know what those tips are about. You can also find some information on my Instagram post. There will be a giveaway to go about those tips. I hope that you enjoy that, but I hope you enjoy this recipe even more. This recipe will feed probably easily six, eight people. You can double it if you're having a large crowd. You'll need a bigger pot than this six quart pot, but you can double it very simply and feed a large group if you're having a party or you have a larger family. So I want to try this. This is so delicious. This is one of my family's favorites, especially my youngest son. Mm. That is so good. It's still quite warm. This is so delicious and we got that meat diced up finely so that it's evenly dispersed with the rice. The rice is the perfect texture. That is wonderful. I hope you enjoy this. Share it with your friends and family. You can go and like and follow my YouTube channel. You can do the same with the blog. And I hope you enjoy.